Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm all set. Okay, I'm gonna put John on now. Okay, great. Okay. Hey Don. How are you? I'm okay, how are you Wicked doing? Mystic. Wicked Mystic. Wicked Mystic, yeah. That's great. You, I, I can't uh, believe this, that, that you guys thought of this. It's wonderful. So you've seen it? Uh, I'm about to see it. I just heard all about it. Great. About your magazine. Yeah. Witchcraft. Yeah, it deals... It's fascinating. Yeah, I think it deals mainly with the lyrical side of um, the music. Oh. So you're in California now? Yes, I am. So how is it out there? It's horrible. It's hot. It's like... It's not even winter out here at all. It's drought. Why is it horrible? Because it's so dirty. Is it? What part? You're in L.A.? Yeah. And it's dirty? Very, very dirty. The, everything gets coated. Your skin, your lungs. Because there's no way, rain to clean up the uh, pollution. Uh-huh. So it's great. I feel so sick when I'm here. Oh, yeah? So where are you mostly? I'm mostly in L.A. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately. <coughs> um, so I, I guess I'm mostly feeling pretty bad. But, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty. It's okay though. I'm just really dirty here because there's no rain. Oh yeah. It doesn't rain in LA. Not very often anymore. Oh wow. Yeah, the weather's been pretty. We're in our fifth year of drought. They're rationing water now. What? They ration our water to us. Why? Because they were in drought. Oh really? Fifth year now. Oh wow. Didn't you know about that? No, I didn't hear about All it. All the trees are dying. Everything. Oh, wow. Our, our snowpack is usually 12 feet. It's like 30 inches this year. Uh-huh. So there's going to be no water at all. Oh, wow. This summer. It's really horrible. I don't know. I haven't been telling in a while. The last time I was there was like November or something. Um, but I just go out there for a couple of days. I really don't know what's going on out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's good that you don't know. <laughs> it's depress you. Really? But, uh, other than that, you know, it's okay. Well, here in New York, it's cold and it's like really bad. And I mean, I could use some hot weather. Yeah. I bet you could. <laughs> All right, do so you want to get get going with this? Yeah. All right, just to let you know I'm recording. I just have to let you know that. Um, all right, so to start off with, I got the tape, I listened to it, I thought it was great. What part of New York are you from? Um, Manhattan. Oh, you're in Manhattan? Right in the city. Oh, I imagined you guys out in the woods somewhere. Really? <laughs> That's why I love New York. I think New York is the coolest state. Yeah, it's really cool. It's just right now the weather's all weird. Mm. <coughs> it's got me really sick and stuff, but Aww. but I guess it'll go away. But, um, yeah, the mag's been out for about a year, and uh, it's just been picking up and up and up, because really is, the market isn't that filled with this type of thing. No, not at all. You know? It's very mean, new. Yeah, it is, and we really like doing it and stuff, and, um, um, so how did you come up with the name Fear of God? Why do you name yourself Fear of God? Well, that's kind of something we, we don't understand ourselves. It sort of right. happened, and it was so strange, and yeah. I think it was meant to be... Until I look at it, it was something that, that was supposed to happen. Uh-huh. Because you changed your name. And it did, and a lot of times things happen to me like that, and so I don't question it too much. Uh-huh. It was basically something I think that was supposed to happen. Uh -huh. Are you religious? Do you believe in God? Uh, I don't... I'm going to say no comment. Uh-huh. The band members have always agreed not to comment on that. Oh, really? Yeah, but... It's not like that's why we chose the name to preach to anyone, no. Uh -huh. It has real esoteric meaning. Mm -hmm. To me, it means something totally different than what most people think. And uh -huh. It's totally different than what the other guys in the band think, too. So we, we don't want to expound on it. We want everyone to get their own meaning out of it. Really? Yeah, because I know it's a real general, and I was just trying to see if I can get it out of you, <laughs> what specifically you meant by, um, by the name. We used to be called the Detente. 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 Is it the same members? No, I'm really an original member now. Um, uh -huh. It was, though. We wrote most of the music with Dennis, who was uh -huh. drummer for Detente. Uh, me and Mike and Dennis wrote songs, and mm -hmm. we got Steve in here at the last minute because Dennis had psychological problems. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he had been hurt physically, and then psychologically, he was so wounded that he took him on. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been, it's been very hard. Mm -hmm. So Detente doesn't exist anymore? No. No, we had to change the name, and so it's that's over. Uh huh. But the soul is still there. There's still remnants of the sound. And uh huh. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, is the style the same, basically? No, the style's different. But really? So a little bit of similarity, just a little bit. Mhm. Mm All right. Let's see, I just I just jotted down a bunch of questions here. Fine. Uh, if I seem a little um, 
You sound tired. I'm real tired. I'm really sick today. I'm, I'm, I feel like a truck ran over me. Oh, really? I think I have that flu that everyone else has been getting, and I've been going, ah, ha, ha. Yeah, right? Because I got some kind of thing where it's, I've been sick for about two weeks now, and everyone's telling me that I got what everyone had in December. Right. You know, so I guess I got it late. <laughs> yeah, I think I got it, too. It's like muscular pain. Mm-hmm. As well as tiredness. Yeah. Uh, who knows what they're putting in the water. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is, the, this is the first album by Under Fear of God, then? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me ask you, so what's the band's influence as far as musically goes? What's the average age of you guys? Uh, 25. 25? Yeah, influences are, um, Pink Floyd. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you do all the, you write all the lyrics? Uh-huh. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what about lyrically for you? Writing, I mean, to um, you. I just basically try not to be too influenced by anybody. I just try to take in what I see around me and uh -huh. put it to the computer and then channel it out the other side, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, So when you write, you write directly onto the computer? No, I mean, onto my brain. Oh, into your brain. Yeah, the computer I meant is the brain. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I just I put it in the uh, brain and uh -huh. then let it come out the other side. Oh, great. Do you um, Even sounds, walking through the streets at night, I'll hear certain sounds and I'll... I'll file it away and pull it out later and Great. it'll be twisted. Uh huh. So do you um can you do you need to be inspired? Can you just sit down and write? Uh I can, but I don't usually have to do that because I have so many back So many ideas. I have so many lyric books filled with ideas that I can just go down. If I need to do something I'll just go pick up my books. But usually I find that I'm just able to write on the spot. Mm hmm. Usually, no problem. I don't even have to go back and look up something. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's strange. It's not too strange. I mean, a lot of people really write down um, keywords and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you um? Do you take all the lyrics to the band members, and then they write the music around it, or do they have all the music first, then you just fit in the, the lyrics? It happens different ways. Uh huh. And each time we we all collaborate on the music. Uh huh. Um. So it happens different ways each time. Lately, I've been writing songs uh, myself with the drum machine and the guitar that I tend to have the melody line mm -hmm. and then write the guitar around. Oh, so you play guitar and keyboards too? Yeah. <laughs> but um, but not all the other songs have been written previously have been written in different ways, and sometimes I'll go with them to them with the lyrics, or mm -hmm. me and Michael work out the melody, mm -hmm. and then we'll go to Dennis with the, he'll put the drum in. Mm -hmm. So it's different, different times, different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the album has a real dark and gloomy feel to it, and um, I mean, I like that a lot. I mean, when oh, I put it on... You find it dark. That's great. Yeah, and when I got the tape, and I was just looking at the, your bio and stuff, and um, I saw that you, were, you had a female lead singer, I thought, oh, here's another... Because most female lead singer bands aren't really... I don't like them at all. Mm -hmm. But then I... I demean it. Yeah. Instead of take away from the, the power of a... Yeah, and then I flipped it on, and I thought it was like, wow, this is really good. And I was like listening to it every day in my Walkman on the way to work. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I really liked it. Oh, well, that makes me happy. I used to listen to certain bands on my way around the yeah. subways in London. Uh-huh. And I love that someone's doing that now. I, I was in your subways recently. I was trying to get to Quantum right. in New Jersey. And I had to take the train up from Philly and this one and that one. And walk through the Fashion Avenue or whatever to, to the Blue Line. Uh huh. Take back in New Jersey. Yeah. But you, have you ever taken the actual subway, subway? Yeah, I did that as well. Yeah. And it was so weird. It was so scary. That was the first time you took it. Yeah, and it, it was like there was such a vibe. And I wrote some lyrics that day. I really? Wrote, I wrote many lyrics in the subway and, and on the train going back over to Hoboken. Uh huh. To get to Quantum Sound, and it was like I don't have them with me right now, so I can't remember. But it was like so revealing to me that it changed my whole attitude on what. Within the veil meant. Yeah. Within the veil is not necessarily a good thing. Mm hmm It could be a bad thing. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, New York City did that. I was very inspired by that. Oh wow. Very it's strange place. Yeah, it's a strange place. It takes some getting used to. It, it's it's the if that's the future. We have to be careful. Yeah, because I mean the city can get so freaking hectic. hectic yes. You know. Yeah, and all the different auras that are there from all the different parts of the world. Mm hmm It can be really you can lose touch with the focus of what America was. 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's real fast-paced, and it can get, drive you crazy sometimes. Yeah, it's a strange place. It's scary. Mm-hmm. It's like a machine that can eat you and suck your soul out and, and your life away. Yeah. And, and then again, it could be good, too. It's strange. When's the last time you were in New York? Just uh, last October. Uh-huh. Were you, were you touring? Doing gigs? No, I was just trying to do a remix. Mm-hmm. Have you, are you doing any gigs now? Oh, we're supposed to be doing gigs about three or four weeks here. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Here in town, now. Uh-huh. And then we're going to do a tour. Do you know when you're going to come to New York? Yeah. When are we coming to New York? Yeah, do you know? I don't know yet. Because I definitely want to go to that show. Oh, I hope you will be there. I hope hope I get to see your magazine there. Sure. I hope you bring me some copies. All your back issues. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm really fascinated to read it. Well, I'll pick it up and um, take a look at it. They have it here? They should, I don't know. Um, okay, I'll make sure that they, they give it to them. They have it. I mean, if you want, do you have a fan club or something? Oh, I'll give you an address. Because you can give me the address later if you want. Okay. When I'm, at the end, I'll ask you for the address, and then I'll just send it directly. Because um, I definitely want to get this interview into the next issue, um, okay. which goes into production this weekend. That will be out real quick. You guys are weekend warriors too, huh? Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Have to. Um, all right, so now how about we get to, I was going to ask you, um, get to each cut and basically ask you I mean, what they're about okay. and stuff. Because um, we do deal basically with lyrics. Uh-huh. Um, all right, so I guess the, the first cut, All That Remains. Can you basically describe to me what it's, what's it about? It's about um, the dark core, the dark heart, heart of the city that uh-huh. spreads itself out. Mm-hmm. Like, spreads itself out like witch's hair. Mm-hmm. So it's darkness covers. You, you do write about a lot of things about like social decay yes. and stuff. Well, decay was a song that I wrote before the and I wanted on the record very, very, very bad. That's so weird that you should say that. I wrote oh, really? a song called DK, and, and I wanted it to open the record and lead into All That Remains. And, and that's so weird that you should say that. Really? Why is it on the record? Um, bullshit. People like the guy that was helping us produce and uh-huh. like Mike fucking it up, <clears throat> fucking up things. It's just really, it was really fucked. And uh-huh. that's so weird that you should say that, because I had it all planned out. And it really? And rolled right into All That Remains, and it's called DK, and it was so, it's so weird that you should say that. Well, anyway, uh-huh. I don't want to get... My blood boiling. Are you going to try to get it on the next album? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it, it was perfect for it going into All That Remains. Uh-huh. But I do, I do like the way this one starts off, which you're just talking. Yeah, so but that's because we, the thrash parts weren't recorded right. The drumming wasn't, so we had to edit them out. That song is usually just totally in your face. Oh, yeah. And that, those, those are lyrics. Now, if you'll read the lyric sheet, uh-huh. there's more lyrics than there are printed on the lyric sheet than I think because there was yeah it yeah. to be a much longer song uh huh because I was trying to follow along at the point I just couldn't yeah I know it's unfortunate uh it comes in I know the feeling the loss of control mm-hmm. then there's a few more verses that yeah. are on the record that you can just follow along with uh huh uh huh but it's it's about the inner the dark heart and the inner the inner city and all it's all it's uh all it's prisons and traps it's uh physical as well as psychological decay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, people, lose, people get lost in hopelessness. Yeah. Because they're so out of touch with the earth. Uh-huh. Because it's covered up by cancer. Yeah, that's right. You did say that in there. Yeah. All right, so it goes into... How about Emily? Is Emily... Is that the one on... Um, Emily's side one, third song. Right, is that about a real person? Yeah. The real person I worked with uh, who, who owned a, a business who... And she was just this horrible, fucked up whore of an old woman. <laughs> and she, uh, she sucked the life out of people because she had had her youth and life sucked out of her. And oh, really? It's a cycle. It goes on. It goes round and round. Yeah, it does. Is she still around? I have no idea. I think she's dead. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, what's this? Red to Gray. Is that about the, the suicide? Yeah, that's the about... The Philippine girl? That's about just becoming... Red is like life, and the flame, and gray is numb, and death. Becoming, it's when your life, when you just, there's no more reason to go on, and there's, yeah. there's no more fire left in you. Right. There's no more will in you, and so you turn to gray. Uh-huh. That's gray. And that's what happened to her, even though she was so young. She, just, she was 13? Yeah, she had just had it. She, she'd been so alone, and so abused, and so tortured that. Did you know her? No reason to keep going on. Did you know her? Yeah. How long ago was this? 
um, few years now, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many years now, but a long time ago. I was the same age as her. Really? Yeah. And it, did you write? Did you, did I, I was the same age, but from a vastly different economic background. So. Uh huh. So it hurt me. I couldn't believe it. There was even God that allowed life to be like it was. Yeah. People. Yeah. Did you write the lyrics when it happened or later? I wrote the lyrics there, yeah, without music, and then tried to put different music to it. Mm -hmm. It didn't really work until Michael and I sat down, and then it seemed to work. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like my favorite cut. It's my favorite cut on the album, too. Yeah? I'm glad it's yours. Yeah, it is. I really liked it. I think the chords should have been built up a little more, but mm -hmm. that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I really like that song on the album. It has a lot of energy. It does, and it goes through a lot of changes. Uh-huh. And, um... So if I see you in person, I'll try and play you the original practice tape of that song. Oh, I'd love it. to. I love it. It was even the earlier. Yeah. I think the album's a little bit homogenized, but, yeah, I think it's even the earlier. Yeah, I really like the feel of the album. Oh, good. I really... Yeah. I mean, I put it up in my headphones really loud and just, like, gets everything flowing. It's kind of low? No, it, it gets the adrenaline going. Oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> if I seem tired today, don't take it personally. I'm just like, I'm barely, I'm barely keeping myself awake right now. That's okay. All right, so let's hop over to side two now. Diseased. I'm sorry? Side two, diseased. Um, that's about, um, basically pretty self-explanatory, you know. Just why are we diseased? Well, probably because of the way we are. Mm -hmm. It's humanity. That's why we have the diseases we have, and that's why we're yeah. Yeah. It's a karma. If you get what you gave, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Oh, I totally believe it. Uh huh. I know it. I get it instantly. Uh huh. I have instant karma. And it's so strong. Yeah. So that's basically what that's about. It's like the world's getting what it gave. That's why we're diseased. Mm hmm. <coughs> okay. Wasted time. Um about anything that you, the listener, want to participate in mm -hmm. and bring into it. It could be about a wasted relationship that wasted your life, mm -hmm. wasted uh, mm -hmm. ambitions on a job that proved fruitless. Right. It could be, yeah. um, well, why'd you write it? It could be, uh, it could be uh, having a child and raising uh -huh. it and having it be just horrible. Uh -huh. well, uh, it could be anything that, anything that the little voice is telling you is wrong and you keep doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, why'd you write it? <laughs> I don't want to expound on that. No? Okay. No, because I, I don't want to be too revealing in my personal life. Uh-huh. You know, but it, it could be any of those things I was just talking about, except I don't have a child, so it's not that. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. All right, what's the next one? Love's death. Love's death. Um, on a human level, on a, on a broad level, it's the death of love in the world. Uh huh. And on a personal level, it's the death of those first first few years or first few months of passion. Mm hmm So it's sometimes it dies real quick, sometimes it dies slowly. But yeah, if you've ever been in love, it's, <coughs> I which I had never been in love until I'd written that song. Um, until when? Until I'd written that song, because I tend not to put love. I never tend to put anything above my art. Uh huh. I tend. To focus on that, so I, I did never really felt that, the real pulls and power of love, and then when I felt it, it devastated me, mm -hmm. and I think it can devastate everyone. Yeah. It's so strong, it's yeah, so, know what you're talking so about. insane and sick, and that's, I hate it, but if you, you know, read the lyrics, but once it's over, fate's hand is a cold hand, it's a sly hand, it's the hand on your shoulder. Like yeah, you're oh, older. I look, uh-huh. I mean, no doubt, uh -huh. you get older, and, and and once you've been bitten by that, you want to feel that beautiful embrace again. Yeah. And as you get older, you know, you're getting less and less a chance of it or something. It's, it's, it's a really, it's a horror song. Mm -hmm. And as the world keeps going on, it gets older and it gets, it seems like it gets less and less caring. But then again, I could be wrong. Maybe we're going to change. Mm -hmm. But it's just about the horror of knowing, having having known the bite and the sting of mm -hmm. pleasure. Mm -hmm. and now knowing the loss, the pain of loss. Yeah. I mean, it has to come. I mean, I think that one goes with the other. Uh huh. You know. It does. Okay. White door. That's about um. 
maybe about death, the death door of death. I mean, maybe you wrote it. Uh, it's strange. Uh -huh. I that those lyrics came, the vocals on that song came one night after another. I yeah. hated, I hated them. I wouldn't even listen back to them. Then on the third night, we accidentally played them all back at the same time, and we didn't touch it. We didn't edit a thing. They answer each other and they talk to each other. Uh -huh. so three voices. And so I'm not really still sure what it's about. You'll notice the lyrics in that song are very small, printed, mm -hmm. because it's just a collage of feelings. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of vocal tracks on the album, right? How many vocal tracks did you do? Uh, maybe three or four per song. Uh huh. Oh, um, because it just seems like the voices are coming from out of everywhere. Yeah, well, that's just how I, I like to do things. Uh huh. How does that come across live? Pardon? How, how about live? Uh, live. Okay. I think it. There's a whole different vibe to the songs live. It's so much more urgent. Uh huh. I'm gonna have a couple of things. Uh, maybe on tape, like mm -hmm. the background, backwards, yeah. and Emily. Because while listening to it, I just kept picturing it live. I guess I just kept feeling a live feel to it, and I just kept picturing how it would be done live. You know, uh -huh. because I, I really like turning this up loud, and I just can't wait to see it in concert actually, and have the thing just really blasting. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. Because live it is very fun, it's very urgent. Alright, help with the last cuff, cut, Drift. Uh, drift is about, um, esoterically about those who put themselves in that dangerous area, which is called the Drift. Yeah. And when they're in that dangerous area, they can be sucked in, and they can be put into situations that are horrifying. Uh huh. Uh, like, like the Green River Murders. Those are prostitutes, you know. Oh, yeah. No one will ever miss you anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, those weren't killed by one serial killer. They were killed by supposedly they're finding out cops. Really? So there there you are, you have cops playing God and it's like, Yeah. Where can you run to? Mm -hmm. and, and and you wouldn't probably be in that situation if you had to put yourself down lost in that drift, chasing the hide, the butterfly or, mm -hmm. or being hooked on something or, or whatever has got you out on the streets and in the drift. And I'm not trying to preach it those people, I'm just saying be aware that it, it's such a bad, scary place that it's, mm -hmm. sometimes it's, you're just, you're just out there and you're, you're getting sucked in. Yeah. And, and destroyed so easily when you're in that area. Mm-hmm. Which is the um, They're finding now that, I mean, I just tried to put myself in the place of one of those women. Here she is. She mm -hmm. She has no one, no one to run to. Authority yeah. or anything. <coughs> the authority, the law is what's murdering her. Yeah. Imagine the isolated feeling. Of yeah, when there's no one to turn to. Right, of care, mm -hmm. of death care. Um, and betrayal, and just, oh my God, this is how the world is. Oh my God, these are people we're supposed to believe in. Yeah. And I'm not saying all cops are like that because they're not. There's wonderful good mm -hmm. cops. Yeah. Imagine they're t or when they're knocked off by one of their own or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's just the world is wicked sometimes. Sometimes, a lot of times. <laughs> a lot of times, you're right. Yeah. It's even more wicked in other countries. Really? You know where they where the police there's not as much reporting and yeah uh, the yeah journalists aren't as brave because they mm -hmm. get killed yeah yeah and et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see here. I see that you opened for Slayer. Mm -hmm. You opened for Slayer in Montreal. Yeah. How was that? Oh, great. Fans okay. liked you? Because a lot of bands opening for Slayer don't get too well of a greeting. Yeah, we got a really good I can, I mean, I can imagine. It must have been great. It must have been a real good show. Especially Canadians, they're crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Their beer is really good up there. <coughs> when did this album come out? When did uh, then the veil come out? Weeks, three weeks ago. Really? So it just came out? Are you going to do a video or anything? Yeah, we'll do a video this weekend in Chicago. Do you want to tell me which cut? Yeah, I wanted to do this, but it isn't. It's going to be betrayed. Uh huh. So. Well, great. I'll be looking forward yeah. to it. Let's see, do I have any other questions here? I don't want to miss anything. Um, no, I guess that's it. It was really great talking to you. Yeah, it was really good talking to you, and I can't wait to see your magazine out. Mm hmm. I'll, I tell you what, if you could, just have them, if you could send me the, all the issues of it here at Metal Blade to James, okay. the guy that you talked to, Jim, Jim. And, and I'll call him periodically and, mm -hmm. and have him send them over to my house, or send... Do you have a fan anyway, club? if you could have them sent to Tony, or if you could have them sent to my manager. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. do you have a fan club address or anything? Yeah, I'll give you his phone number. Okay. 415. 415. 652. 652. 1... Five one six 
or 1615. 1516 or 1615. 1516. Yeah, I'm really sorry about it. It's okay. I don't have my Okay. Okay, great. And, and send, like, you know, a phone number or something. Like All right, I'll send you a whole, whole bunch of stuff. Okay. And um, I'll, keep, I'll definitely keep in contact with Metal Blade and find out when you're playing. Yes. So I definitely want to check out that show. Yeah, I'll call you. Mm -hmm. I'll have someone call you when we hit New York. Okay, great. All right, we take care. All right, you too, and feel better, okay?